Well, let's bring in our next guest on FT Live, Lance Lynn, joining us, coming in hot. And we can ask him about this, too. So, Lance, I'm, I'm sure, obviously, you're paying attention to the rest of the league. And the beard looks fantastic, by the way. I'm sure AJ will comment on that as well. But uh, we were just talking about Manoa. He was one of the best starters in baseball two years ago and then just kind of fell apart last year on the mound. So, what advice would you have for him? And would you buy stock in someone like that based off the track record? And I don't know, he's probably like 25. Yeah, uh, you know, I actually uh, know him a little bit. I got to talk to him a little bit. Him and I are in the same boat. We go, you have a good year, and then all of a sudden you, you feel like you nothing works and everything that worked the year before just seems to go away. But I just know him as a competitor, uh, know him as the as the person and stuff like that, just, just through passing and getting to know him a little bit, uh, you know, through some phone calls and stuff like that. And the man, the dude wants to win, man. And, uh, you know, when you're young and all that, you kind of go through times when you think you have things figured out and then, you know, you get, you know, the old, the old kick in the dick and don't have a good year and then you got to reassess. So hopefully, and I know him well enough to know that, you know, he doesn't want to be bad and he's going to do everything he can to make sure he corrects that. Yeah, that's got to be tough, you know, understanding what you went through the year before, the struggles. And then when you do struggle or when, or if you do struggle the next year, it's got to go right back in your mind. So is that, uh, something that can play tricks in your mind? Is it something like in the off season? Don't worry about it. It's easier said than done, like you said. But there's got to be something in your mind where it says, all right, I got to go back to that feel good vibe that I've always had and what I've always pitched for, that confidence. I mean, you can always talk about it, but you got to be about it. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know how it is. Every time you go back into an off season, you reassess the year before. You saw what you did good. You saw what you did bad. Um, and then you try to make sure you keep that foundation and then you try to build off of it. I think sometimes you see guys get themselves in trouble um, trying to chase certain things or certain trends. Um, and then while doing that, you lose what got you there, uh, what made you good. And, um, you know, I don't know what he was trying to accomplish. Um, I know what got myself in trouble last year, and it's trying to chase certain pitches or certain pitch shapes or, or breaks and stuff like that that don't aren't natural with the way that your throw goes or stuff like that. So for me – Personally, it was just getting back to my base of what, what made me good and what, what I was able to do for, you know, the first 12 years of my career and have success. But also by failing, you're able to use those things you failed at and then figure out how to incorporate those in your games to be complementary pieces instead of a focal piece. And speaking of focal pieces, you know, you don't have social media, but your wife definitely does. Are you an Instagram mm -hmm. husband? Because I, I've seen people, you know, that go around and their wife is taking pictures and they're holding up the light ring in front of the camera so the lighting is perfect. You know, and you're not in a lot of these pictures. So I'm assuming you're the guy behind the camera and you're like, okay, Diamond, like, like pose properly. Nope, the lighting's off. Hold on. I, I totally can see you doing all this. See, and the fact that you even said that, you know you're lying through your teeth. And when you assume things, AJ, you make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> and I will tell you this. I've never held up a light ring and or anything like that. Every once in a while, I'll hold a camera up and snap a picture, but she's pretty good at uh, of knocking those things out on her own. She's got it down. Okay, so are we going full Grizzly Adams beard? Is Are they going to allow you that on the Cardinals, or are we going to have to trim it up a little bit before we get to Jupiter? There's nothing in my contract that says I have to trim anything. So um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, being myself. Maybe a, and, hey, maybe a home run or two? Uh, maybe a home run or two to trim it up? Yeah. No. This is who I am. You either love me or hate me. You know that. <laughs> fair, fair, fair enough. I like it. I like it. So you just got back from Turks and Caicos, man. I'm honestly right. This last week we were looking for our next trip to take the family to Turks and Caicos. Tell me a little bit about it so I know if it's a good idea to go there. I feel like you guys did have a good time, right? Yeah, so we had a blast. So we didn't take the kids. So if you're taking the kids, I I, I would uh, I would say that's a, it's a good spot too. We saw a lot of families down there with kids. They had uh, we stayed at the uh, Grace Bay Resort. Um, they had an area for kids to play, stuff like that. Beach was great. Uh, food, pool, everything right there. And you know they got a bunch of different resorts down there where you can do uh, you got all the places you want to eat and stuff like that. So we enjoyed it. You know, easy flight from Miami. Um, getting down there, um, great weather. So, uh, you know, it's our first time to that island, and uh, we would definitely go back. So if you're going down there, I, I would uh, recommend Grace Bay. And they got a they got a grown-up side, and they got the kids' side, so you don't have to, you know, if you don't bring your kids, you can you can go to the adult pool, so you'd be good to go. Nice. Thank you. 
All right, Lance. Oh, any time. <laughs> all, all your trip travel agent, travel agent, Lance. Yeah, now exactly. Is. These guys all take too many vacations. Anyway, uh, Lance, what? AJ, you've been all around the world already. We're like running I, out of cities for you. I used to be, but not anymore. Oh yeah, this job holding you back. Him, but, him and Adam Jones, man, those guys go everywhere. I'm trying oh to catch gosh. up to them. I <laughs> cannot keep up with Adam Jones. Uh, question for you, Lance, another former teammate who did unfortunately have to shave off the facial hair. How do you think Carlos Rodon can bounce back this year? Because I will say this, he's had you know injuries in his past, really going back to college. But then you've seen him come back and be one of the better pitchers in baseball. Then he goes through adversity. So can you see that happening again for him? Because obviously last year was a mess for him, and he would be the first person to say that. Yeah, and I think that, you know, like you said, he would be the first person to say that. Uh, knowing Carlos and knowing when Carlos um, – is in a good headspace and knows what he, you know, feels good and, and doing his thing. The, my man is one of the best competitors that you can have. Um, when you get to, and we all know that, you know, New York's a different beast. Um, I think that you see a lot of guys kind of take that next step year two when you get there. Uh, he had a bad start. He had a bad start and he was hurt to start the year, trying to come back, trying to do this and that. It was just things snowballed on me. Um, and I think when you, Things snowball on you, and you just signed a you know hundred and sixty million dollar deal and all that. You feel the pressure, um, but he wants to be great. He's put every effort that he can in to rebound from that. Um, you know how he's healthy right now, and I know that I know what kind of person he wants to be, and he wants to win games. He's not out there to to lose games and not pitch well. Um, so he's gonna. I think he's gonna write that ship just just knowing who he is and and what kind of mentality he has. My man's a bulldog on the mound and. You know, if he's right, he's he's one of the best lefties in the game for sure. Being that you're one of the vets in the league and you've got a lot of dirt in your spikes, do you hit someone like that up at any point during the season or at least in the off season, even with just like the motivational text? And when that does happen, do you get a response like a positive, hey, appreciate it, man, I'm hustling? Yeah, I mean, obviously when you're teammates with guys and, and you have those relationships, uh, you, you were able to reach out and be like, man, or when you play with them, you know, you always catch up in the outfield during BP and stuff like that. So, yeah, you usually get a, a good a good response and something like that. You just want to tell them, hey, you know, everything's good, man. Go through ups and downs in this game. Just, uh, you know, figure out how to get out of your rut and, and, and keep, uh, keep going, and, and that's all you can do. Going to bring something back from earlier in the show. So – we were talking about a splitter and why more American pitchers don't use it. Todd Father was bringing it up when we were talking about Yamamoto because he's about to enter the show, obviously. Have you ever thought of using a splitter in your arsenal? I know you were Mr. Eight versions of fastball for a long time, but then you started to kind of add a little bit more to the repertoire. What about a splitter? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's something that every uh, pitcher in their in their mind thinks that they can do. Um, and then you start throwing it and this and that, and it's just – it's a, it's like a, it's a power feel pitch because you got to be able to get it off the seam and certain like that. And I think those guys over there, I remember playing with um, uh, Tanaka in New York and he threw it the way he threw it and stuff like that. I was always asking him how he did it. And I was like, man, I'm going to try to do this. And then it just does not go the direction that they're able to make it go. I don't know how they do it. Um, but it seems like every uh, Japanese guy comes over with a really good splitter. So it's got to be something that they're able to, you know, manipulate or, or feel as they're growing up. Um, and able to do that uh, when they come over. It's just like most every Dominican guy comes over with a great slider, right? A lot of them. Right. A lot of them do. Yeah. Yep. You, know, yeah, it's you, just you like change, though. Some, you know, you're, some... you're, you're, you're a finesse guy now. So, I mean, you should learn a split. Yeah. It'd fit your personality. You should actually learn a knuckleball as many off speeds as you throw at this point in your career. I agree. I think, you know what? I think I'll go down today and start firing splits in the bullpen tonight. And we'll see what, what about knuckle, this knuckleball? Year. knuckleball. Uh, you know, knuckleball is for when you're 40 and older, right? Aren't you? What are you, 39? No. Close. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? Uh, what? Do you, when are you coming to God's country? Um, I'm heading down there uh, into next week, uh, getting everything ready for the I think official reports the 13th. So we'll be down there uh, just before the Super Bowl. We're going to come down to Florida to watch the Super Bowl in Vegas. Okay. Are you? Uh, did you rent a big house for me? No, I didn't. I made sure that I have just enough rooms for all of my kids and not you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you! I need a place to stay down there, especially mm -hmm. in Jupiter, man. All right. So <laughs> then the next question is: Are we? Are you going to be allowed out one night either to a play golf with me 
And then B, maybe go, you know, I sent you a picture the other day of Pete Prenzi, our old strength coach with the Cardinals, who still lives down there. We went and hung out at a place called Square Group. Are you going to be able to get out of the house for maybe a cocktail? I don't know, man. I got three kids and a, and a, and a foreign house, so that's going to be tough to do. Um, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure golf will golf will be able to be done most likely, especially if I, I'm able to get out of the field early to get it done. Okay. All right. That's, that's, that's 50%. That's not bad. Yeah. Fair, fair <laughs> compromise. Hey, Lance, some people in the chat want to know if you've thought about life after baseball, like, is there anything you want to do? Or obviously you've made plenty of money and you can just hang out and do the dad stuff. But have you thought about like any type of kind of side job work, whether it's working in the game broadcasting you'd probably have an open invite from the ft fam which you know wainwright's getting into broadcasting and might be part of the best broadcast little booth that we've ever seen with Przinski and adam mean so i'm sure you're hoping for a fox game of the week here and there but what do you got on your mind yeah it's it's actually funny to see uh aj and adam do their games together just from their time as teammates um but you know, when you have two different, we're very personalities similar. Like we're very that, similar people. Yeah, very similar people. So that's why it clicks so well. No, but you know how it is. It's just like having a clubhouse. You can't have too many of the same people. So that's why it works. Um, no, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. For me, uh, you know, number one thing is you like to stay involved in the game, but you also don't want to make you don't want to you know make sure you're you're putting in the time and effort or that you were when you were playing because uh, it puts in a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of travel. So for me, uh, family first and then whatever fits in with the ability uh, to go on from there, whether it's uh, helping out uh, coaching or helping out, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, helping guys just figure out things throughout their career and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different ways you can go, a lot of different ways you can help. But I think it's number one is helping the next generation of player and figuring out to make sure that, uh, you know, they have everything they need to succeed if you can, if you can help them in any way. Lance, have you seen uh, Yamamoto's javelin that he's going to throw that he practices with? No, I've not. Uh, is that on the social media? Well, yeah. They're, so they're going to start selling them in the U S and I was wondering if they sell them, will you try one? Uh, no, even if I was given one, I wouldn't try it. Why not? I'm definitely not paying for it. Okay, so if if we were if you're we able to arrange one for you to be given one for free, would you at least try it? See, what are 60 we doing? Track and field says yes. We're doing. We turn it into track and field. No, that's what. Hey, he throws a hundred, and he throws a nasty wow. split. Maybe that's how you learn your split. You throw the javelin, I mean, and it teaches you the split. I mean, I mean, everybody threw a hundred when they were twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a tranquilizer dart, doesn't it? <laughs> It'd be interesting. I, mean, I, I think we we start off with them in uh, LA. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Is that your first? Is that your opening series? Is it Cardinals? Yeah, we LA? get it, we get it, Cardinals in LA. That's opening. Uh, we get the first Sunday night game. I'm sure we'll have that that Saturday Fox too, right? Nope. No, you do no? not actually. No. Nope. Oh man. Mm -hmm. They didn't even give you the biggest game of the year. I think that first Saturday is Yankees Astros and Giants mm, Padres. That's a good one too. That's a good one too. But I know right. you guys have Sunday night baseball. Could that be a Lance Lynn homecoming back to LA on Sunday night baseball? Well, I'll have to uh, ask the manager if he's okay with me starting game four. Oh, is it game? Um, oh, you guys play four before that. I thought yeah, that would be game the three. Four game. We got the old four game starter out of the out of the gate in LA. Coming from the oh. East Coast, I appreciate Damn. it, MLB. <laughs> oh, so it'll go great. It'll go sunny. You're, are you going to be two? You think? I don't know. Sunny. Uh, I mean, I think we're all Give fighting me. for a job in spring training, right? That's what they say every year. Yeah, when you go. yeah you're, right. Team, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're yeah, right. I'm just here to try to make the team. Uh, anything I can do to help. So, um, whenever, that, wherever they want to, yeah, whenever they want to slot me in, I'll be ready to chuck it. Okay, I'm calling Ollie. I'm calling Ollie right now. Actually, you, you want, know, I'll you call? want Sunday night. I'll call Yachty and make sure that you pitch the fourth game. Oh, here we go. You're already, you're already <laughs> trying to stir that pot. I see you working. Yeah. The man with the plan behind the scenes. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey, do you, would you, what would you prefer, pitching in day or night games? Ooh. It doesn't matter. So it, it changes throughout the year, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, when you get out of spring training, you're like, give me all the day games you got. I'm already on that schedule type thing. Um, and then as you get into like, the bulk of the season and start mixing in, 
I'll tell you when you don't want a day game. You do not want a day game in June, July, and August anywhere in the Midwest. So uh, that's when it gets a little steamy and a little hot. So for me, it depends on the weather. Early on in the year, I love day games. A little cooler, let's do it. Later on in the year, let's do night games. Why do they do that in spring training? And should they have more night games? Or you guys like the schedule there? I think that you, I think that you're starting to actually see more night games. I did in in, uh, in AZ last year. I felt like I saw more night games than ever. Um, I, I like it um, in the in the grand scheme of things. Once you get closer to the season, um, you know, obviously you can you need to mix in some day games and all that. But I mean, if you're looking at night games, you go play night and show up a little later in the day and do your thing. That works works out well in spring training. The worst is when you get in a been there a month of long going in at eight o'clock and then you you know then you have a couple of night games it gets you in a weird spot so i think oh. there's definitely uh should be some more night games throughout spring training switch i mean to be honest with you you see the hitters in the first couple of night games uh first week two of the year they just it just doesn't feel right to them so for their sake uh you know i'm always looking out for the hitters for their sake they could probably use some more night games during spring training and get them up to game speed i always I agree that I always said the last week should be, you know, if it's Monday through Friday all night and then Saturday day, you know, make it like how they're going to do it in the regular season, at least the last week so you can get your uh, sleep schedule right. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, because you get in during the season and you start waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. and you got a 7 o'clock night game just kind of beat you up. So I I agree with as as the spring training goes on, those night games uh, need to be uh, incorporated a little bit more. Why why do you go all, all spring training? play all day games, especially if you're in Arizona and then you go east, right, or west. Mm. Either way, you're in Florida, you go west. You know, you play all these games at 1 o'clock, and then the first week you're like, oh, 7 o'clock, guys, and your, your body's like, wait a minute, what the hell is going on? Wait, I'm used to being up at 6 a.m. And, and at the park by 7, and now all of a sudden I, I can sleep in. It's just it's just a weird dynamic, and I agree, man. I wish, I wish they would do more night games, but they do it for the fans, and plus, you know, people like day baseball. Yeah, and that's why you can mix them in, you know. You can mix them in down there in spring training. Half the people that come to spring training games are there on vacation, so they're going to come at nighttime anyways. They can come, you know, go to the – in Florida, they can go to the beach during the day and then come to the game at night. So I don't think they'll really care. <laughs> hey, Lance, got a question for you about your former ball club. So Chris Getz takes over the White Sox, and they've had an interesting offseason. Of course, Dylan sees his name popping up in trade rumors. They've even addressed it publicly, just haven't gotten the offer that they've wanted. What do you think of their approach so far this offseason? They've taken a ton of former Royals players. It's pretty clear that they're looking to do like a, you know, quote, culture change, trying to bring in like a different brand of baseball player, but not just on the field. So I don't know how much you've seen from the moves that they've made, but there's been a major roster turnover. I don't know if it's necessarily a more talented team, but I think they're figuring that, you know, they need to switch things up even from the group that they've got from what they traded last year. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to see, obviously, when you uh, underperform, you're going to see some turnover. Um, I think that they're trying to put in a, a different system and a way to do things that, um, you know, haven't been there in the past. Um, you know, I don't really, you know, know what the, the plan is. Um, obviously, you know, I still have some friends in that clubhouse. And they some of the guys that they have uh, left over from last year's squad are capable and willing to, you know, take the next step to, to be what they need. Uh, they just need to, you know, the right back and to be able to do that. So you know, hopefully, uh, you know, bringing in some guys that, uh, you know, you can get a little different, uh, a little different flavor of, of how to do things. And, and, you know, some guys can uh, start following and then also, you know, learning to lead in their own way where, uh, you know, as we all know, you know, there's, you know, there's teams that have multiple different leaders and you got to find different ways for different guys to, uh, to lead and, and bring guys along. And it's not always the guys that are making all the money or, or, uh, you know, have the long-term contracts, you know, those, those quote unquote grinder guys that, uh, you know, do everything that they need to do and all that are, are also guys that are, they bring a lot of weight in the clubhouse. Yep. Makes sense, dude. Well, good catching up with you, man. We're a little over time, but, um, next time we'll see you is in, is in as AJ calls it, God's country in Jupiter, oh, yeah. Florida. Well, I'll be on east. Sure. I'll be on the East Coast time that time, so I won't mess it all up. He gets confused <laughs> with time zones. He, he really gets confused with time Dude, zones. I said, I said, any time after one, and then next thing I know, I'm getting a call at twelve fifteen. Where you at? And I'm like, Dude, I said any time after one. So maybe that <laughs> it was, was it was one fifteen here. Yeah, one fifteen. Because as it, you, the way that you work is the only thing that matters is what time zone you're in and where you're at. That's all that matters. So I see how you are. 
I, I will Me. say that's not a fair fight. Uh, Lance Lynn against uh, Mark behind the scenes. There, there's a bit <laughs> of a mismatch. It wasn't there. his fault. It wasn't. Like, it, oh, it, it, it was. It was. It was not Mark's fault. It was. Uh, I, when I I said yeah, one fifteen works. Totally thinking it was my time, and then never saw Eastern Standard Time. So that's on me. That's fair. That's fair. Nothing, like that. nothing a little Gloria there. can't handle, though. That's all. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. We're too we'll busy right. taking we'll Instagram photos. We get it. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, you when you were texting me, giving me a hard time for being late, I'm sitting in the middle of drop-off line for pre-K in the afternoon. I'm like, yeah, I got <laughs> yeah, true. no shot. True. I got no <laughs> shot. I'll see if I can do it later. <laughs> Appreciate sure. you, Lance. We'll see you in, Thanks, uh, Lance. in Jupiter in a few weeks. Dude. See you, brother. All right. Sounds good, guys. See you later.